About a year ago, I cheated on my husband while I was on a business trip. There's no way I can say how wonderful my husband is. He's the most caring, loving, sweet man in the world. He took such good care of me. He made me coffee every morning and he rubbed my head to wake me up. He adored me and we were so happy together. Sexually, things weren't satisfying to me at all, but I didn't notice the problem because so much was going on in our lives that I thought I just lost interest in sex altogether. I think when I started to lose interest was pretty much when we moved in together. At the time, I had a huge sexual appetite and wanted to try lots of things. Nothing too kinky, don't worry. Every time I tried anything, I think it made him uncomfortable because he would either joke about it or say he was too tired. One night, for example, I went all out with a leather outfit that I thought was sure would get him excited. But he was so tired. He tried to have sex with me, but I felt like I was forcing him and I felt so ugly. Not even sexy leather lingerie could make me attractive. My husband is a lot more attractive than me and I felt like he just liked me for my personality, not sexually. I felt so unattractive and I guess I just thought I'd give up on sex for the rest of my life. Then I went on a business trip and had an affair with a very sexy man who made me feel attractive. Looking back, I had no clue what I was thinking. I mean, I didn't even stop to think how I was walking all over my husband. I just wanted this man so badly. I remember thinking, I know, very stupid, that this could spice up my relationship with my husband because I was remembering what it was like to feel passion. I came back thinking I wouldn't hear from the other man, but he and I started emailing every day. I didn't tell my husband for three months. I tried to end things with the other man lots of times and started seeing a counselor, but I just couldn't give up the way the other man made me feel. What I feel worst about now is that during that time, I was trying to decide who I should be with. I think that's terrible, like it was my right to hold crucial information from my husband why I decide whether I want to be with him. I finally told my husband, but I don't know why I did then, because I was not supportive. And when he would lash out at me, I would say things like, it's not worth it after all. Not allowing him the space to be mad at me. Then the big downward spiral began. I obviously wasn't being supportive enough for my husband. And he told quite a lot of our mutual friends and co-workers. He was breaking down at work crying. So I got mad at him because I didn't know how to face anyone again. So I started leaning towards the other man more. Lying to my husband about that. He found out and tried to make me cut things off. Rightfully so, of course, but I couldn't. He started telling more people about the affair, including my parents and many relatives. And he was talking to my mom on the phone a lot. I felt like he was turning everyone against me. And how could I ever face my parents after that? My husband filed for a dissolution of marriage six months ago, and he went through this week. A lot of times I think how wonderful my husband is, but whenever I think about getting back together, I think it's impossible because of his parents knowing about the affair. Also, I know it's all my fault, but I'm afraid of living the rest of my life doing penance. I am really jaded now because of my own actions. I think it's scary that there are mean people like me in this world who will hurt such wonderful people. I guess I'm not even looking for advice. Maybe just some people to commiserate with and also people to tell me how dumb I am for blowing such a perfectly good marriage. This is the end of the post. Let's go over some of the top comments and responses from original poster. Reader comments. I cheated on my fiance years ago. I had many of the same reason as you. Lost my sexual appetites when we moved in together. He didn't satisfy me sexually and etc. There were, of course, other problems that I couldn't see at the time. I would end up in bed with a man who was incredibly gorgeous, an Abercrombie model, who made me feel like a sex goddess and the most beautiful woman inside and out in the world. My fiancé found out, and that was the end of our relationship. 
It took me years to see it, but I now know that I cheated for a reason. To get caught. To get out of a relationship. I have since had a relationship with a similar man to your husband. Wonderful man, nurturing, supportive, all that. But he didn't do it for me. Wasn't what I wanted for the rest of my life. So I ended it. I'm certain it may take time, but you will eventually truly know why you cheated and it will help you grow as a person. But it's never good to hurt other people intentionally. But what you did wasn't so much as an attack on your husband as it was much more of a serious soul searching. Soon enough, you will see the light. Hopefully, if you end up like me, you will eventually realize that the end of this relationship was eventually the best thing in the world for you. You can be you, 100% you, and not half of blah relationship. Coffee and head rubs do not make the world go round. Coffee and head rubs are not what dreams are made of. Passion is. Use this opportunity to find your passion. And remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the arms of a man. Original poster. It's good to hear that some good can come from this. Hopefully, I can at least grow from this experience and not hurt someone like this again. I'm seeing a therapist who told me exactly what you're saying about me using the affair to unfulfilling relationship and that I need to focus on finding myself. But it all sounded so theoretical until now. Hearing that it has worked that way for you makes me feel encouraged. I cried when reading your last paragraph. Don't worry, it's good because it made me think. Because every time I feel wrecked with guilt, which is about every minute of the day, the coffee and the head rubs are what I think about. And now, hopefully, I will have something else to think about. I want both him and me to be able to find a great passion, even if it's not together. I cannot speak for marriage builders, but they generally believe in exposing the affair in stages. Most of the time, when the affair is ongoing, the belief is to expose the affair to the other man's wife and the parents of the wife. Most of the time, this works because many times the cheating spouse is in a fog. When reality hits, the fantasy goes away and the marriage can attempt at recovery. This was not successful for you. The next stage is to tell other friends. If the affair continues like you did in an attempt to understand the pain that the cheating wife is inflicting on the betrayed husband and to understand there are consequences for their actions, Usually, when the affair is exposed, it usually ends. In your case, you continued to lie to your husband and continued contact. Your husband was desperate for you to understand the consequences of your action, which in your case did not work out. Finally, another reason for exposure is because if you do not, then the betrayed spouse is actually enabling the affair to continue without any consequences to the cheating spouse. This is known as having your cake and eating it. They are known as cake women. Many times only through exposure can this cake woman attitude be stopped. Again, this did not work for you. I always like to ask how you would feel and what you would have done if the roles had been reversed and your husband continued to contact his lover. Again, I cannot speak for him, but maybe you should think about it. Again, I am sorry that you seem resigned on getting divorced and not staying in the marriage. Nevertheless, I wish you the best. Original poster. That makes sense when you put it that way. To me, at the time, I felt like he was telling people to push me away and that it meant he had given up already. But it makes sense that no matter what his motive, telling people close to you is a good safety net. Looking at the stage you mentioned, he did go way, way overboard in the people he told. Totally, totally nothing compared to the damage I did, of course. And anyway, who could blame the guy? He was hurt beyond belief and he needed people to build him up. I don't know what I was thinking. Getting all excited and lovey with a guy I barely knew when I'm a married woman. I have been trying to contact my husband, but he's totally unreachable. It's like he dropped off the face of the earth. Smart guy, avoiding me after all the stuff that I put him through. The strange thing is, when I'm down, I sometimes 
exaggerate how wonderful he is in my mind, which came out in my initial post. And hearing people glorify him, I'm thinking, well, he wasn't all that great. We had tons of problems and he was very controlling in the relationship. And whenever I tried to bring up our problems, he would freak out to get me to stop complaining. He didn't want to work on our problems. We tried therapy, but there wasn't much to talk about because he didn't think there was anything wrong in our relationship. I should have insisted on getting another therapist because the dork we went to didn't help me in pushing things. Husband thought it was a waste of time. And believe me, he was not the kind of guy who would do whatever I wanted. I made tons of sacrifice for him, including major hits to my career by following him around for his job. He generally gets his way. I know I F up by sacrificing beyond what I wanted and I realized way too late that I resented him for it. But I felt at the time that if he felt strongly about it, I should go along with him because I loved him and that should take priority. In sum, great guy, yeah, head rubs and coffee, but no scent to just yet, folks. Sorry, I must sound crazy. I'm going through the gummits of emotions now. Reader comments. What a great guy. But then again, no, there were lots of problems. You're not crazy. Just dealing with a myriad of emotions. Maybe this isn't the love of your life and was just a great guy on paper. Original poster. This week, I've been focusing on what you said about my life lacking passion. Because I know it has been for a while. Because I moved to follow my husband a lot. I don't have many close friends where I live right now, which is something else I don't like. I've made a few here, but it's just hard to compare with the closeness I have with my friends who are far away. So I have been focusing on ways to meet new people and start up some dreams. So this week, I decided to take up violin again. I'm not good at it, but I love it. And last time I played, it was a good way to meet people through performance group and stuff like that. Now that I have started again, all the goals I have for myself, like piece of music I want to play well, all are coming back to me and I have something to be excited about. For so long, my life has been work and worrying about other people. I effed up big time and I will regret it till I die. But I think you're right. Unless I'm happy with myself, there's probably no chance in hell I'll be a good partner for someone. I feel like I sound so selfish.